OK. So in this example here, I mentioned that, well, OK, maybe it was not entirely valid for me to put this equal sign, right? How do I actually know that this function is equal to its Maclaurin series? Um, well, it turns out that the key is the remainder, right? And we pointed that out in the, in the introduction. We said, remember that, you know, if you have a Taylor polynomial, there's always this remainder term, right? So the theorem says, simply enough, that, you know, if the remainder goes to 0 as n goes to infinity, then f of x will be equal to its Taylor series, right? Um, at least on some interval of convergence, right? We still have to pay attention to convergence because we are still dealing with the power series. Um, and so basically you can figure this out, right? You figure the values of x where the remainder goes to 0. As long as the remainder goes to 0, you get this power series representation, right? This is not a very formal statement of the theorem. It's stated a little bit more carefully in the textbook if you want to see the details, but this is the main point. Just want to kind of get the, the basics down so we can look at the example. So coming back to this example, how do we actually establish that this is indeed equality? OK. Well, remember what that remainder term looks like, All right? We're dealing with the function cosine. We're dealing with a center 0. And so we get a remainder that looks like this. It looks like the n plus first derivative at some number t, right, divided by n plus 1 factorial, divided or and then multiplied by x to the n plus 1. And again, the condition here on this t, t is unknown. All we really know about t is that its absolute value should be less than the corresponding absolute value for x. Okay? But we know something about this remainder. We know that if we take the absolute value, well, we get, we get this derivative here. We have n plus 1 factorial okay, times the absolute value of x to the n plus 1. And the derivatives, well, the derivatives are all either plus or minus cos or plus or minus sine. And we know that sine and cosine are bounded functions, right? Range is from minus 1 to 1. So this thing is less than or equal to the absolute value of x to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 factorial. So we get to there. All right. So from here, it more or less boils down to convincing yourself that that limit has to be equal to 0, right? Um, so on top, you have just a, it's a power, or it's an exponential, right? Whatever x is, this is an exponential. On the bottom, you have a factorial. Um, we've talked about the fact that factorials definitely grow faster than powers, right? Because this looks like, you know, so. This is what? It's like absolute value of x times absolute value of x, um, well, you know, over 2, absolute value of x over 3, absolute value of x over n plus 1, right? Um, so every, every time you multiply, you multiply on the top by the same thing, absolute value of x. On the bottom, you multiply by something that's bigger, right? n is going to infinity. So this is going to go to 0, right? Um, so these terms, I mean, these terms might all be constant, but the whole thing is going to go to 0. So because the remainder goes to 0, and I know I haven't shown that limit particularly carefully here, um, you can also use like ratio test arguments if you want to show that it goes to 0, right? Um, that's one way to do it, right? Um, that's just probably a good way to do it. Uh, but the remainder goes to 0. And because the remainder goes to 0, you know that you actually have equality between the original function and its Taylor series representation. 